Well, in the next 10, 15 years, computer chips will cost about a penny, meaning that intelligence will be everywhere and nowhere. And the internet, for example, will be in your contact lens. And so when I look at you, I'll see a biography of who you are. And if you speak to me in Chinese, it'll translate Chinese into English, so I'll know everything about who you are and what you are saying. And if you're driving a truck, you'll have infinite knowledge of what you are looking at. You'll always know who you're talking to. You'll have blueprints, diagrams right there in your contact lens. And you'll never get lost. And you'll be able to deliver things cheaply and more efficiently. We'll also have driverless cars. For long hauls, for example, from point A to point B, that can be done without a driver. However, humans will still be in the loop. Because even in 20 years, robots will not be able to perform simple tasks that are non-repetitive. For example, hauling uh, boxes and taking inventory and keeping track of things and loading cars and packing. All the things that we take for granted that we think are trivial have to be done by humans because robots are very bad at non-repetitive tasks. And then, if you want to talk to an expert, let's say machine part breaks. Let's say you need to talk to a specialist. What are you going to do? Talk to your wristwatch. In your wristwatch will be an artificially intelligent expert, an expert in medicine, an expert in law, an expert in transportation and shipping. And you'll simply talk to it in just plain English. It'll scan the internet and give you all the information necessary to complete the task. So we're talking about a future where computer power is almost for free and prices will go down Things will become more efficient, and it means we're going to have a better life. What all this technology does is it ushers in what is called perfect capitalism. That is, capitalism is a question of supply and demand, which are imperfect today. The consumer does not really know how much things really cost. The supplier does not really know what the consumer wants. With all this technology, we are headed toward perfect capitalism. So for example, if you own a trucking company, you have to know who has the best supplies, what are the best routes, what does the customer want. These questions are very hard to answer today. And we'll be able to answer that because there'll be transparency in the market. You'll know what the consumer wants. The consumer, in turn, uh, will be able to analyze the profit margins and the quality of goods and services that it sees. And if you are a business person, you'll have data mining. You'll have targeted marketing. You'll have big data and also branding to increase your profits and increase your efficiency. Well, what we're seeing, especially in developing nations, is the growth of gigantic mega cities. Take a look at Mexico, Shanghai, Beijing. And transportation infrastructure becomes a nightmare. A nightmare because of all the people, the, the crowded conditions, the accidents. However, computers can, are ideally suited for situations like that. You can have then a map, a grid of the entire city down to, down, to the nearest, uh, down to the nearest block, whereby trucks will never get lost, deliveries can be made on time. So it means that even with the gigantic mega cities being created, it means that computers will be able to track what's happening with the infrastructure, be able to supply environmentally friendly forms of energy, food that are necessary, and again, that's where transportation comes in. Autonomous vehicles are here today. In fact, one of my friends in California drives to work every day in the morning like this. He reads the newspaper, he just talks to the car. He just tells the car where to go, reads the newspaper as he goes to work in Silicon Valley. This is legal already. So we're talking about a future which has already arrived. Next will be long-haul missions. Truck drivers, for example, that sometimes get sleepy, sometimes get tired. Uh, well, s some of them will be replaced, but like I said, there will be humans in the loop. Robots are very bad at non-repetitive tasks and semi-repetitive tasks. For example, things like construction work, gardening, garbage man, police work. Robots can't do those things. Because each of those requires a different set of skills for, a different piece, for different scenarios. Every garbage is different. Every crime is different. Every construction site is different. And if you are involved in the, in the packing, shipment, keeping track of inventory, then these things cannot be done by robots. 
humans will have to move the boxes, keep track of inventory, make sure that the trucks are packed correctly, and so on and so forth. So I think that in the next five to 10 years, we're gonna see this revolution taking place in trucking, but there will be humans in the loop. And then beyond that, in the decade beyond that, the internet will be literally everywhere and nowhere, including your contact lens. So when you talk to a customer, you'll know who that customer is just by looking at that person. If that person speaks to you in Spanish or a different language, you'll be able to communicate because you'll have a translation right there inside your contact lens. And if you're driving, you'll have a complete readout of what you are looking at, where you're located, maps, diagrams, infinite information just by blinking. And then in the decade after that, we're talking about things being controlled mentally. Already, we can connect the human brain to a computer. Already, today, it's possible to drive a car mentally. This has already been done. Mentally drive a car. You'll, in the future, you'll simply mentally call for the car. The car will come all by itself and come pick you up, and off you go. You simply mentally give it instructions as to where you want to go, and off you go. I think 20 years from now, when we look back, we'll say, how could you possibly live in a world where you had to mentally drive a car? Our kids are going to say, mommy, daddy, what? You grew up in a time when you actually had to grab that wheel and, and drive? We're going to live with it, and it'll be a mix. Not all cars will be fully autonomous. There'll be a mixture of cars that you can manually drive, as well as cars that are simply driven mentally, simply by giving it instructions.